how you feel um, and how your personality affect your behaviors in security. And this research started partly um, after watching this movie, Inside Out. If you haven't watched it, I think it was a pretty good movie. Uh, but basically saying that every everybody has kind of five feelings, uh, fear, joy, disgust, anger, and sadness that kind of manifests at different points in time. Uh, but before I start, I do want to uh, thank, uh, this work was would have not have been possible without the four undergraduates listed here, Spencer, Anna, Daisy, Anne, and Sheila from the psychology department. And this work was also partially funded by the NSF. Okay, so when we started this research, we had three main questions we wanted to answer. One is, uh, can your personality affect the strength of the password you create. Uh, second, does knowing more about security uh, imply that you will create a better password or a stronger password? And thirdly, can your behavior be changed uh, based on the personality that you exhibit? So in terms of personality types, there are quite a few of them. You're all probably pretty familiar with the big five, which uh, um, have the five personality traits being extraversion, openness, agreeableness, neuroticism, and conscientiousness. One issue with the big five is some people can have different traits for example, someone can be an introvert, but also be very open to new ideas. Um, or someone can be uh, agreeable, but also very open and very conscientious. Right? So because of uh, that you could have multiple traits, uh, we decided to use a true colors personality type. For the true colors, you only, each person can only have one color. So you either blue, orange, gold, or green. You cannot have multiple colors at the same time. And how we, um, assuming you all know the big five, but you just, for the big five, you just answer questions and you, you have a scale of how much you agree or disagree on whether an adjective uh, relates to you. For example, if I give you an adjective, are you an extrovert? If you strongly agree with that, then you're likely to be more an extrovert than an introvert. So for the true colors, what we give is we actually give you a picture and you agree or disagree with that picture. And you are given four pictures and uh, whichever picture you agree more with is a color you, uh, your personality is. So if you are a blue color, that means you are likely to be more empathetic, cooperative and compassionate. If you are orange, that means you are more energetic, spontaneous uh, or charming. If you are a gold color, it means you're punctual, organized and green means you, uh, like data, so you like uh, analyzing data, you're intuitive and also visionary. Okay, and so that's a personality type we went with. There's also, uh, we wanted to measure how much security each person knows. So for that, we use a, a questionnaire called HASQ, which is short for the human aspects of information security questionnaire. And in there, there are nine questions. Um, I put an example of two other questions on here. So the first question would be, is acceptable to use my social media passwords on my work accounts? And two, it's a bad idea to share my work passwords, even if a colleague asks for it. And then uh, each 
and then we give a scale of one to seven, where one is you strongly disagree with that statement, and seven means you strongly agree with the statement. Um, so if you strongly disagree with both statements um, shown here, it means that you have a, uh, or I guess if you strongly disagree with the first one and strongly agree with the second one, it means you have a high level of security knowledge. Uh, the questions are very hard. It's pretty straightforward to see which, which one you should be. And then lastly, we uh, measured password strength using two different methods. Uh, one is uh, using an algorithm from Dropbox called ZXCVBN. Um, I'm guessing somebody wasn't very, you want to create a new name, so just type the keyboard um, letters on there. But uh, what this password strength estimator gives you is you give it a, a string and it outputs a number from zero to four. A number of zero means that that string you gave it is a very weak password. A number of four means that the string you gave is a very strong password. And then any, any, anything in between is uh, medium. Uh, we also use our own password metric. Uh, so we, we give a point for each of the following um, cases. Like if a password meets any of the following uh, metric or cases, we give one point. So the password had more than eight characters, they get one point. If they had numbers inside of the password, they get an extra point. Uh, special characters or special symbols, you get an extra point, uppercase, and then no dictionary word. Um, they also get an extra point for that. And our metric goes from zero to five instead of from zero to four for the algorithmic uh, uh, metric. Okay, so after this background, we, we conduct an online survey using Qualtrics. Uh, the survey had two parts. Uh, the first part took uh, roughly 50 minutes to complete. Um, and then the second part was a month later, uh, which would take roughly 20 to 25 minutes to complete. Um, all the surveys, the, the first part of the survey asked questions like, what's your personality type? Um, we also asked like, ask the participants to create a password. So we asked them to create a password they would think would be strong. And then we also ask some other questions like demographics, like age, uh, gender, and so on. And for the second part of the survey, which is one month later, we ask a similar question about the, what's your password security knowledge? So that high skew questionnaire. And, uh, and we ask them if, if anything has changed between um, part one and part two. So we had two groups of participants. One is from our SONA, uh, SONA group, which is college age students. So these are uh, participants who are college students taking psychology 101. And these participants were compensated with course credits. And then we also recruited uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk participants uh, who were compensated um, a couple of dollars for completing the surveys. Uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk, if you don't know what it is, it's a crowdsourcing platform. So anybody can sign up to be an MTurk uh, um, participant and then they get assigned a task. If they complete the task, then they get paid. And uh, so we started data collection a little over a year ago and we're still collecting data now. So for the SONA group, we have uh, over 254 participants right now. And for the MTurk, we have over 413 participants. 
Okay, so what this graph shows is um, we, we have the um, data for the MTurk, so the blue MTs for Amazon Mechanical Turk, the orange SONA is our college age uh, group. And then uh, we plot each uh, true colors personally type that they add, and then the percentage of participants in each group that are that color. So if we look at blue, which is a mechanical Turk, uh, roughly 30% of them are personality type blue. And 37% uh, is gold, 28% um, is green, and a very low number is orange. For SONA, which is college age, it's, the distribution is very similar. So we have a high number that are blue color, um, about 27% which are gold, and then some green and some orange. Uh, and if you wanted to go back, I could go back slightly. Uh, so blue color is those that are empathetic, cooperative and compassionate. So a lot of college students fall into this category. Orange is energetic, spontaneous and charming. Gold is punctual, uh, organized, and then green is analytics, intuitive and visionary. So, uh, okay, so that's a distribution of our participants. And then we try to then map, uh, we ask everybody to create a password they believe to be strong. And then we feed it to the Dropbox ZXCVBN software to calculate a score on how strong that password is. So the score goes from zero to four and the graph again, blue is for MTurk and orange is for SONA. And you can see the distribution is kind of pretty similar. So uh, you have a few zero for MTurk um, and then a few ones for both of them, but the rest of them are very similar distribution. You have a few more uh, uh, MTurk participants who pick stronger passwords than SONA uh, students. Okay, so that what we're showing, trying to show here is that the Password score that's created is very similar for both MTurk and SONA, except for the four where there's a slightly bigger difference. Okay, so we map the distribution of uh, true colors, personality type, and then password strength. So what the next two graphs are going to show is where we combine the personality type and the password score and we plot that into a graph. And uh, this might look complicated. Um, unfortunately, if you're colorblind, I'm not sure if the colors will make a difference, uh, but we try to map each color of the graph to the personality type. And then the X axis is the password score. Again, from zero to four, but so now we had no zero score, so we, we're not showing that uh, graph. And then the y-axis is how many people uh, were that personality and created a password of that score. So for example, 60% of participants who were green, uh, had a green personality score, created a password that had a score of three. So that's what this means. And then for example, this graph here, so 22% of those who had an orange personality type uh, create a password whose score was a four. So from this graph, just by looking at it, it looks like participants who had a green personality, which is this one here, tended to create stronger passwords than uh, other personality types. Um, so, so I let, oops, let that sink in. Um, so this is a similar graph 
but for the Amazon Mechanical Turk instead of Sona. Um, for this one, it's really hard to draw any conclusion. Um, so you, if you look at the four colors, blue, yellow, uh, blue, gold, green, and orange, um, they're pretty much the same. So they're slightly higher in orange here, uh, but for MTurk, there were very few participants who were orange. So even though the 38% seems pretty high, there were there were only five percent of participants that had orange. So it's kind of hard to draw a conclusion for this, but the other colors were were pretty similar. Okay, so that's personality type and password score. So next we wanted to see if participants who had uh, greater security knowledge based on that HASQ questionnaire, whether they tended to create stronger password. So this is a box and whisker plot. So the X axis, or I guess the four plots are the password score, one, two, three, and four. And the Y axis is the HASQ uh, points value. So how we determine the points is if, if the question was, it's a bad idea to share your passwords and you strongly agree with that statement, you get seven points. If you strongly disagree with that statement, you get one point. And then anything in between is, is the number of points you get. So then there were nine questions. Uh, so the maximum number of points you could get is nine times seven. Um, so you can see for Sona, most of the participants got about 35 points, which is about half of the score. So the X, so if you don't know what a box and whisker plot is, the X here shows the average score of all the participants. The bar here is the median. And then these are the first, um, and uh, second quartile and the dots are, I mean, first and third quartile, and then the dots are outliers. So what you can see from this graph, the conclusion is that it doesn't matter how much you know about security, the password you create um, is the same, right? So even if you know a lot about security, the likelihood you create a password with a score of one is the same as the likelihood you create a password with a score of four. Um, so if we look at the MTurk uh, participants, um, we see a similar result in that the average is pretty much the same, uh, regardless of, uh, so the average high school score is the same regardless of what password you pick but the points value is slightly higher than SONA. So you can see the average is roughly from, a, uh, from around 50. If I go back, the SONA students, the average was about 35 points. So the conclusion is the same that again, for MTurk participants, uh, the password they create is independent of how much not security knowledge they have. Um, so this graph shows a difference between MTurk participants versus SONA uh, students or SONA participants. And you can see the average score is higher. So that means that MTurk seems to know more about uh, security than college age students, but uh, does not, do not necessarily pick a stronger password. So we tried to look, so for SONA, they're all college age students. So the average age was about 18.5 years old and the range is like 18 to 21. So for MTurk, we get a wider range distribution. So the graph here uh, shows the, um, each color shows the different age groups. So 18 to 21, we didn't have anybody younger than 18, 
so this is 18 to 21, uh, 22 to 40, 41 to 60 years old, and older than 60 years old. And you can see the average high school score increases as they grow older. Um, maybe that makes sense because the older you are, that means you're working. And for all of us who are working, you know, we get reminder or training emails every once in a while, or we get those um, phishing emails that test that we took the training and all those things that college students do not get. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is we had this ZXCVB, ZXCVBN score that calculates how strong a password is. And we want to compare it with our own criteria, uh, which means they had to use an uppercase, lowercase, special symbol, and greater than eight characters. And uh, this is a table and we calculated the correlation which was 0 0.8. So that means there was a pretty high correlation between the ZXCVP and score and a score that you would get from like a general IT about how to pick a strong password. So we just wanted to test that the ZXCVP and score is something that uh, reflects the advice that IT uh, professional give to users. Okay, so the last thing we did, so this is this is our part one um, results. Then the next thing we want to do is, can we change participants' behavior? Or can we change their knowledge? So what we what we did is, for each participant, we gave them a message. Uh, and this is the message that we give them. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I just highlight a few things from there that we say that uh, you have to use a different password for each of your online accounts. And you should use a strong password. And the strong password is, um, has all the combination of letters and also has to be long. Um, and then tell them to take the time and create a password for each account as soon as they can. So, so this is the message we give them for part one. And then what we do is for part two, which is a month later, we kind of ask them the same security knowledge question and we see whether that changed. And um, so this is what this table shows is the, the HASQ score for part one and the HASQ score for part two. Um, so the higher the score, that means the greater the, knowledge, the security knowledge based on the nine questions that I get asked. And each row is the different personality types. So blue, gold, green, and orange. So you can see from the table is regardless of what the personality type is, the average high school score went up from part one to part two. So what this, and some, I guess some uh, colors had a greater jump in score, like gold had a slightly slight jump, but others like orange had a slightly bigger jump. Um, but what, what this could mean is that maybe the message we gave them here worked, or um, maybe the message uh, had them do some more research. So maybe once they get that message, maybe they went online and say, oh, what's, what's a good password? What are good password strategies? What are best practices for creating or for sharing passwords? So we don't actually know what, you know, whether they went online to do more research or if just that message by itself uh, was good enough. Uh, we did in part two, we did ask them if anything changed. Um, we did not really get too much feedback. That, that was an open answer question. Uh, so we didn't oh, open form um, answer. So we did not get too many feedback. Some, we got some general things like 
some participants said, oh, that made me think more about passwords, which, which was pretty general that we couldn't really um, get too much uh, from that. Okay, so, uh, so to answer the three research questions we, we had at the beginning is, so first was do personality types affect the strength of password created? So we think it's a yes. So as we saw in Sona, the green uh, personality type tended to st create stronger password, uh, but we do need some more, um, we just need to, to do more experiments to, to see whether that's true um, in general. And then the second question was, does background security uh, knowledge affect the strength of password created? So that was a no, which was pretty surprising because you would think that people who know more about security would be more likely to create a stronger password. Uh, but we did not see that for both Sona or for Amter. What we did find was um, people who are older tended to know more about security. But again, they were not more likely to create stronger passwords. And lastly, can behavior be changed? So we have a maybe, um, as we saw here, the average score went up, uh, but it went up regardless of personality type. So whether it was a blue, gold, green, or orange, the score went up uh, anyway. So, so what, what we want to do next is, can we maybe do a more targeted messaging? So meaning that let's say somebody is uh, a blue personality type. So they, they know, they're probably gonna be more cooperative or like empathetic. So instead of giving a generic message like this, that say, oh, pick strong passwords, you know, do this ASAP. Can we give a message that like, oh, if you do not pick a strong password, maybe your family members, your friends might suffer because someone will hack into you and from there they can hack into your friends. So using your kind of empathy or maybe cooperativeness and say, oh, everybody's doing this. So let's help, let's help make password or let's help make online accounts stronger. You know, if you're more cooperative, then maybe you will more likely do that. So that's that's one thing that we're trying to, to look at next is, can we have more targeted messaging? Because what we're getting here is pretty promising. Sorry, I just saw a message in the chat, so I was just checking if it was a question. Okay, so in terms of future work, so the results we have uh, show that there could be a strong link between personality and security. And uh, we each have different personality styles. Uh, so that could be used as uh, better training. For example, if maybe it's the green personality type already are very conscientious in doing, on in following best practices for security, then maybe training can be targeted to those personality or to the other personality types. So we don't have to train everybody the same, right? And also if, again, like I mentioned earlier, if it's like a blue personality type that are more empath empathetic or cooperative, you could have a more targeted training so instead of giving IT, giving out their generic, oh, don't click on suspicious emails or um, you know, pick a strong password, we could have a more um, targeted message that would appeal more to each personality. So they would more likely follow the best practices. And we are collecting more data. Um, so hopefully in uh, you know, several months we have uh, some stronger results. Um, so part two, the one thing we did not do in part two was to ask the participants to create a new password. So that's something we changed uh, this year, but we, we don't, uh, we collected data, but we haven't analyzed that yet. So whether 
whether the messaging actually helped make people create better, stronger passwords, and also whether the messaging um, incentivizes people to use password managers. Um, so hopefully by the end of this year, um, we will have an answer for, for this one. And what I looked, we looked at is the true colors personality style. We also looking at different kinds, um, like kind of going back to the movie, um, you know, so depending on your anxiety levels, uh, what is your security uh, behavior then? You know, maybe anxiety, stress, maybe that might decrease your, um, your security knowledge or your security behavior. For example, phishing emails, right, um, tend to uh, have a sense of urgency. So if you're already anxious or you're already stressed out, and you get a phishing email, are you more likely to click on the link than if you were very calm and, you know, and, and no stress. Um, and then we're also looking at other kinds like cognitive style. So this will be examples of, uh, um, are you a uh, systematic thinker? So meaning that you think a lot before you do anything, or you're more of an intuitive thinker, meaning that you kind of act on the spur of the moment, right? So this might be like, you might think intuitively, like maybe intuitive thinkers um, will be more likely to fall for phishing emails, for example. Um, but, you know, nobody has really looked at that and our preliminary data actually says that might not be true. Um, and then we have trust, um, and there's also other kinds of personality styles that we have not looked at. Um, okay, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I already see there are some questions. So let me move over to the left side of my screen. So the question uh, from Deborah is, is an instrument available to identify the personality color codes? Uh, if you mean the survey, uh, we, can, we can share our survey with you uh, if you want to reuse it. Uh, so just send me an email and I can uh, share, share the Qualtrics survey with you. All right, are there any other questions you are able to unmute yourself and ask, or you can drop it in the chat? Okay, well, if we don't have any more questions for Eric, thank you so much. Oh, wait, there's one just popped up, let's see. I'll let you take that, Eric. Yes. Uh, okay, so the question uh, was, so the increase was not a lot uh, between the two surveys a month apart. So that's correct. Um, I mean, some, some personality type had a bigger increase, some had a smaller increase. Um, and then will you say the messaging helped? So we think the messaging helped. So we did calculate, um, um, whether it was significant. So the increase was significant. So the alpha was less than 0 0.05. Um, so, so this leads us to, to conclude that the messaging did help. But what we want to do next is have a more targeted messaging for each personality type. So to appeal to each person, um, you know, so have a more, more like relation with them. It's like, Yesterday was Giving Tuesday, right? You probably each all got a lot of emails about donating or giving back. Um, but those who really appealed to me was the personal things. Like, you know, oh, a student whose parent uh, passed away during COVID and she's having to go for college. 
and to give back to help her do that. So to me, that appears more to me than a general, oh, help, stu- help a student go through college. To me, that's so generic that, I don't know. But, but anyway, that's, that's what we're trying to do next. All right, is there anybody else with a question? Okay. Well, thank you um, to our speakers today. Thank you, Eric and um, Renita for joining us today. These presentations will be available on the community website in 24 to 48 hours. The link is in the chat. And uh, thank you again for joining us today and I hope you guys all have a great rest of the month.